Bang, bang. What's up, everyone? Lunch money time. Or while she's trying to get rich, the rest of us just trying to get our lunch money right. Here I am with the beautiful and intelligent Plena Marinova. She looks like Santa Claus today <laughs> with the all red outfit on. What's up? What's up? How are you? Tell the people what you want to do to my hair so I'm no longer beautiful. Before we get into the news, breaking news, breaking news. Plin and I were speaking this morning and she was telling me how she needed a haircut. And so me being the generous, kind, loving gentleman that I am, I said, no problem. I could do that for you. And there's been lots of women, I think, that on the Internet have been talking about cutting their boyfriends or husbands or uh, maybe brother's hair. Uh, but I figured I haven't really seen that many guys say, hey, look, I got to cut her hair. So newsflash, I tweeted, if the tweet gets 10,000 likes, she said I can do it. You know that I will live stream it if we get to 10,000 no. likes. Internet, go do your magic. He was trying to say, he was trying to make me do it for 1,000 likes. I was like, oh, really? So 10,000 seemed like an impossible number. And then it got a couple hundred likes in the first 10 minutes. So Guys, we'll like let you know. All right. What's going on with unemployment? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Anthony, do you want to get kicked off your Come on, let's go. live stream? What's going on? Okay. If this isn't a live stream. Um, for the ninth week in a row, millions of Americans have filed for unemployment benefits. Uh, another 2.4 million Americans filed for the first time last week. We're almost at 40 million. We're at 38.6 million people in nine weeks. We're going to hit 40 million. It's absolutely devastating. To give you an idea, there's about 155 million uh, Americans that are considered in the labor force. Uh, we are going to hit 40 million uh, probably in the next week or two. And uh, it's just sad. But guess what? The solution's simple. Open up the economy. Get people back to work. More than 50% of all deaths are happening in um, nursing homes. Lock them down. Protect the old, the sick, the people with pre-existing conditions. The death rate for young, healthy people is very low. Open up the damn economy and are get you, people back to work safely. Are you trying to run for president right now? No, oh. but it's it, it's just common sense. We made the decisions that we made to lock down the economy based on the data we had. At the time, that was a smart decision. We overreacted to make sure that we didn't get a bunch of people killed. That was a good decision. We now have more data. We now understand this better. Open up the economy, get people back to work. Have them wear masks, tell them to wash their hands, tell them to do social distancing, but get businesses back online because you're going to have 40 million Americans that lost their jobs. 40 million people crazy. have lost their jobs. Uh, meanwhile, though, Starbucks, uh, U.S. same store sales have recovered more than 60 percent from last year. How is that possible? Dead cat bounce is coming. I don't like the dead cat bounce. Why? I just don't like the saying. So part of this is th – this is a very misleading headline. 60%, it's not 60% growth. Basically, think yeah, of it yeah, as yeah. they did $100, right? Let's use these numbers. They did $100 last year at this time. Now they're doing $60. But aren't you surprised? I feel like it should be lower than that. No. They've lost 40%. They're still have – they're down 40%. That is a massive thing. A normal recession, you would see 30 40 50% loss. This was such an outlier in terms of they went from having revenue to zero, yeah, right, because of the government mandated shutdown. So now all we're going to hear for the next couple of weeks is, oh, recovery, recovery, recovery. The only numbers that matter, the only number, go back to the pre-pandemic levels, how far down is the economic activity? And right now they're at a net 40% loss. That would have been the bottom of the 2008 crisis, right? So it's just... We're going to see a lot of uh, intellectual Olympics. We're going to see a lot of uh, what, what is uh, known as a chart crime. Do you know what chart crime yeah. is? Chart crimes are things where like they show the X and Y axis, but they don't label them. <laughs> so it just looks like this, but you don't know it, what's the unit, of, uh, the unit of measurement that they're using or the time horizon, whatever. They just show these charts that look really bad, but they don't actually put anything on it. Or they'll do things like... Uh, I can show you a hundred percent growth. Yeah, but then it's from one dollar to two dollars. Yeah, 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 right. It's just a chart crime. Don't no, don't do chart crimes on Twitter. What do you think about Starbucks? Don't do hair crimes on Twitter, <laughs> what Anthony. Do you, what do you think about uh, Starbucks? Uh, uh, just uh, okay. I don't know where we did it. We uh, went to Starbucks today. But I'm doing so my part. The Starbucks was interesting today because normally, you know, you 
uh, order on the app and you just go pick it up uh, from the storefront thing they have. Today there was a line and the people behind me were actually uh, asking if they could pay with like cash or a credit card because it used to be mobile only. So one, I've never seen a line and two, I guess Starbucks is now uh, kind of opening up a little bit more with it. So you don't have to just do mobile order. Yeah, so you can pay on the spot. How long until they just say, open the stores back up? Whenever New York's uh, shelter in place order goes. North Carolina shelter in place just got extended five weeks. Five weeks. That's to the end of June. These people have lost their minds. All right. What's next? Um, bankers. So Ooh. a lot of bankers are really excited to go back to work, go to their high rises, but a lot of banks are saying, no, no, we may, the, the future may not look as it did before. And I just want to say, I was reading this article and then I stumbled upon JP Morgan Chase said it might station attendants outside elevators to help push buttons. So fewer workers need to touch the keypad. That is not a good solution. Why? You're going to have somebody whose literal job will be to be a button push pusher, elevator button pusher. Yeah, but they probably have a glove on. I, they protect this themselves. This is the dumbest thing. If there's a, there's the building, elevator there's elevators who have elevator uh, attendants that literally they sit in the elevator all day and they just go up and down see, and up I, and down. I, I think that's uh, an unusual form of what is it? A form of unusual torture? Crime? No. Um, Manipulation? Punishment? punishment? Yeah. All right. <laughs> just remember. I can't think of the phrase. Long Bitcoin, short the bankers. Somebody in the comments will tell. And me. while we're while Wall Street's trying to get rich, the rest of us are trying to get our lunch money right. So if the bankers go back or they don't. The world will keep spinning. It's not a big deal. So, but I do think that this is a uh, a sign of things to come where uh, there will be a change to the way that people work okay. in offices. But I have a question. So all yes. these people saying, you know, high rises are over because you can't have more than two people in an elevator at the same time, all this stuff. Uh, Andreessen Horowitz investing today in another remote work startup. Are we kind of over rotating to this work from home world where coronavirus isn't going to be here forever, hopefully. So one day we'll be able to be in person again. Like why is all of this happening all at once, assuming we'll never be allowed to be in person again? Well, I think that, so it's a great question. There's a couple of trends that were already underway that have not been accelerated. So tech companies over the last couple of years have realized, wait a second, there's technology that now can allow us to work in different areas, yeah. right? And, uh, and still work. So remote work, um, there was a lot of companies who just said, look, we're never going to try that. That won't work for us. But they were just forced to try it. Right. And they're like, wait a second. That actually wasn't as bad as we thought it was. That was easier than we thought it was. So you'll see some of that happen. Uh, two is society is is psychologically changing where it might have been weird to like work from home. People just if thought like, oh, well, well, a banker or any industry, right? But really banking, it, it, uh, probably more than any, is just like, oh, that person, is. are they taking the day off? Are they actually doing anything, mm -hmm. right? Now I think it's getting kind of um, intertwined in society a little bit more and people are, are becoming more open to that idea. And then the third thing, frankly, is like, now people I think are realizing, wait a second, like, why do we all shuffle into these big high rise buildings, right? And spend commute, like commute times, 45 minutes, an hour, hour and a half. There's people who come from Connecticut or New Jersey into New York to, and that commute, like, is that really a good use of time? Right. But I just, I think it can be done so much more efficiently if you're in person. Like last night I was on FaceTime with two of my friends. All of a sudden I got like kicked out of the room and then I got back in, I could see them and I could hear them, but they couldn't see or hear me. So they were just talking to each other. And I was like, oh my God, guys, I felt like a ghost, just like, Hey, and nobody could see me or hear me. And I feel like that period of time, it's just so inefficient. You lose a lot of time. Just when you're in person, it's just so much easier. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a perfect example of a user error. That <laughs> <laughs> yeah, was not a user error. I was in, but I was a ghost. <laughs> but like part of it is, yes, of course, there's technical issues. My favorite is when people are on Zoom and they're like, uh, hey, uh, hey, hey, Rich, uh, uh, you're on mute. You're on mute. Hey, Rich, you're on mute. Like, and they play this game, right? Or like people get on and, and they're looking like this on the screen. Like, can you see me? Oh my God, can you see me? That close to the camera. <laughs> right. But like, I mean, obviously there's like that type of stuff that goes on. Uh, and yes, there's tons of benefit to going in person uh, to do certain things, but there's also a lot of things that you don't need to be in person. So it's not right. as binary. And I don't think that they're going to take bankers uh, or any industry and say, hey, you don't ever have to come to the office. Instead, what I think they're going to say is you are encouraged or you are eligible to work from home more often okay. and remote work. So to take this one step further, what is going to happen to the high rises in New York City? What will they be used for if they're not used for 
work. I think commercial real estate in New York City is going to go through a very big change. There will be uh, two major factors of that. There will be a repricing of the market. The question is, how deep is that repricing uh, or how far do prices fall? And two, how long does that last? Right. Remember, real estate prices were at an all time high within the last like three years in New York, I think. Um, but they overbuilt. Right. So one of the big things was there was tons of international uh, investment in New York City real estate, whether it was commercial or residential. So builders were like, oh, look, at all this capital flowing in. Building isn't like writing software. You got to build construction. Right. It takes time for projects, whatever. So they started to ramp up all of this uh, production of, of uh, buildings. And then while that was happening, the international investment kind of uh, started to fall. Mm -hmm. So there was a mismatch. And so now all of a sudden there's all of this built up uh, infrastructure in New York but there's not the demand to actually take it out, right? In terms of renting, buying, et cetera. So there, there's a oversupply, which means prices will have to readjust. How long does that last? We don't know. Uh, and the second thing is there'll be reuses. So how many retail places are gonna end up being used for something else? How many of these old, you know, high rise buildings had office space? Like you might go in and say, hey, I wanna make something for the profile here, right? But it's not, doesn't look like a traditional uh, commercial real estate space anymore. Mm -hmm. you, you just use it for something else. Interesting. Would you go and take out a uh, a high rise and make it like the profile uh, empire? Sure. <laughs> yeah. Why not? Make it into a hair salon, baby. <laughs> Speaking of. We go have a conversation after. <laughs> Rent the runway. What's going on there? Rent the runway. Um, so they're about to raise new, they're trying to raise new funding, 25 million, except the new funding would value the company below its previous billion dollar valuation at a seven and hundred. $750 million. So that's a down round. So there's a couple of ways I think about this, though. One, yes, it is a down round. They raised it a billion last time. Now they're going to raise it 750. But the economics of the business has changed, right? And what I mean by that is it's like in the public stock market, right? When um, United Airlines stock fell from $80 to 20, everyone's like, oh my God, it's so cheap, right? right? Mm. Kind of. But the financial performance changed, right? So they did $8 billion in revenue last year. Now, if the market cap's $5 billion, you would say, why is it trading at a lower uh, valuation right. than they did in revenue? Well, it's because they're not going to do $8 billion it's this just, year. You're so used to, in the private market, seeing things just go up, valuations go up, that when something goes down or stays flat, you're like, oh. That's only because we were in the longest bull market in history over the last 10 years. And so most people who uh, are, let's call it, 35 or younger, that's all they've ever known, right? Right. They were just coming out of college in the uh, great financial crisis. And so pretty much their working career has been a bull market. Mm -hmm. they, they don't see this type of stuff. It is interesting, though, broadly speaking, to see how the startup scene shakes out with all these companies who had never been through a recession before. And only there were a lot of them were founded in the bull market. So we'll see how that goes. You have uh, Rent the Runway. You I do. have paused Rent the Runway. For, I'm going on my third month pause now, but they've been really good about just letting people pause. Instead of saying, you know, I'm just going to leave as a customer, they're letting you pause your membership so you don't have to pay the monthly fee until you want to. But like how many people in New York City do you think did that? A lot of people. A lot, right? So their financial performance, I bet you the right. $750 million round is actually a very high valuation based on what they're projecting their financials to be for 2020. Mm. Right. So like, the, yes, they're taking the 25 percent haircut on the valuation, but based on their revenue, if you just looked at it from uh, the revenue for 2020, they're actually getting a massive valuation yeah. because the hope is that people will come back. You'll continue to well, pay on the bright side. At least, you know, they can raise money. Yeah, true. And, and from like legit people. Yeah. Right. Um, all right. What's going on with college cheating? So the college cheating scandal, remember when all the celebrity parents and a lot of non-celebrity parents got um, in trouble for getting their kids into colleges, Lori Laughlin of Full House um, and her husband will plead guilty in the college admissions scandal. Um, and they're pleading, hold on one second. They're both pleading guilty? Agreed to plead guilty to one count of conspiracy to commit wire and mail fraud. And um, that means that they're going to, she will spend two months in prison, pay 150K fine, and be subjected to two years of supervised release and perform 100 hours of community service. And he's going for five months, going to pay a $250,000 <laughs> fine, two years of, of supervised release and 250 hours. Yikes. Why is he getting so much more than her? Maybe he was the mastermind. That sounds kind of sexist. Why, why is he getting more Pro than her? I, I don't know. Read the article. 
I didn't read the internet on that one, so I can't comment. But, so, well, I'm just here to ask the questions. But what is very interesting is, do you actually think that they should sh uh, serve jail time? Uh, I don't like elitist, elitism. elitism. Elitism, yeah. yeah. And I don't think that's fair. And I really operate on things being fair or not. And I think that's absurd, but. How many people, what percentage of people do you think lie on college applications? My guess, over 50%. Wait, lie in what way? And anything from oh, like how many community like volunteer time you did in high how school? How many or... people put on their college application that they were in a club and they went to one meeting? I know, but this is right? but this is more of like a this is way worse. This is much more intentional. A bribe. But my my point is uh it's bad. They shouldn't have done this, they should be punished. But when you put it in context of that entire process is super uh corrupt and the incentives lead to people to um yeah. Uh, to to do dumb things, right, and and send false information. The way you solve this is like, yes, you should punish these people. This is obviously they're doing it in a way to like discourage other people from uh, from doing the same thing. Right. That's but what like we're... change the process. Right. Right. Well, like... <laughs> I think this kind of stuff is always going to exist, though. Right. Like I went to a school. I remember when we were in high school. You went and... to a school. <laughs> I went to a school. <laughs> And so I just remember uh, people being like, well, I'm a legacy so I can, you know, my brother went here, my sister went here, my dad donated X amount of money. And I'm like, oh, I can't check that box. It sucks. I agree. But like, do those people really, uh, do you want to hang your hat on that? What? Like, I don't I mean, know. It gets them if you, a good if you wake up, if you wake up every day and you're just like, I'm doing X, Y, or Z because somebody else donated money here or whatever like but the shitty thing is that i don't think a lot of these kids knew that their parents were doing this come on you don't know that well, your that your parents are saying you're the punter on the football team and you don't even know what a football is that come one was, on that one was funny come on you're saying that your parents said hey you're gonna go out for the rowing team and you're like i've never even been in a boat before god i wish my parents were that smart come They'd on like, she can't she's not athletic guys like these I kids don't know come on Okay, can we can we move on? You're you just you're so nice to people. What do you mean? Let's call it the truth. Okay. Um, Why did the kids go to jail? No. Ooh, that's a real question. Big question. If the kids participated, why didn't they go to jail? What if they didn't participate? Well, I'm I'm here to ask the questions. I don't know if the kids participated or not. It's very interesting though how this is being treated. Because they are influenced by their parents who have the money to do that. You are a kid. You're taught since you're a little kid. It doesn't yeah. matter who in your life tells you to do dumb things. Don't do dumb things. If it's your parents, it's a little different. Have your parents ever asked you to do something bad that you said no? No. I have. <laughs> my dad one time told me to go knock over my brother when he was little, and I was like, no, nah, I'm not going to do that. You just did it voluntarily. <laughs> no, nah, I went and knocked over my other brother. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what's going um, on with Elon Musk? <laughs> okay, so there's a college girl who has Elon Musk's old phone number and <laughs> every time he's in the news her phone explodes with like texts and calls but the funniest part is like she's a 25 year old skincare consultant and uh she she got a lot of calls and text messages asking for elon so she asked her mom like hey keep getting these texts about elon i don't know who that is and her mom's jaw just dropped and so there's some really interesting things that people have texted her like she has accidentally intercepted Oh, wait, no. One woman volunteered to go to space space with SpaceX. Another person sent a blueprint for a bionic limb. Um, a South African businessman asked about buying a thousand trucks. The IRS called about a complicated tax issue. And she has all the text right here. It's such a good story, guys. Does she respond? She does. And uh, at one point, like the former Walt Disney executive, John Lasseter, texted her about the Tesla he bought, said it was a magnificent magnificent car and she got to talk to him and it was a funny story how cool yeah. is that if i was this lady i literally would respond to everybody and say hey elon's not available right now <laughs> but uh if you send your name your title your corporation and a way to be, reach you i'll make sure that somebody gets back to you and then just reach out and say hey elon's still not available but uh you got a job but the funniest part of this is she says, whenever I see his name pop in the news, I'm like, okay, I have to actually learn about what he said because chances are someone's going to message me about it or call me about it. I mean, it's pretty cool. <laughs> what would you do if you had Elon Musk's old number? Oh, I'd be saying wilds. I'd be sending him all kinds of crazy stuff. Be like, sorry, I can't talk right now. I'm getting on the spaceship. <laughs>
<laughs> and they'd be like, wow. Yeah. Bro. Or I'd be like, hold on a second, texting you back from my neural link in my brain. So funny. <laughs> like whatever. And then they'd be like, it's like, uh, this isn't Elon. And I'd somehow like find a, a selfie of him on the internet somewhere and send it back and be like, yes, you'd, it is. You'd be the ultimate catfish. No, I'd just be a troll. It's not it's, a, catfish. It's a catfish. No, I just would literally just be a troll. That's fine. We're at uh, oh zero. God, we're guys. at zero time. But uh, before uh, before we let you guys go, uh, <laughs> oh yeah, in 32 minutes, we have 880 likes on the tweet. If it gets 10,000. Okay, okay. If you don't stop doing Ooh, that. Oh, look at the photo. <laughs> That's what you're going to look like. That's what you're going to look like. At this point, I might as well just like shave my head. You know I would look good. We we could do that. I, I know somebody who could do that. <laughs> Okay. If we get to 10,000 likes on the tweet, I will absolutely live stream me cutting Polina's hair. As you can imagine, I have skills. I have humor. I have a computer. It'll be watch made this. for the internet. Watch this. Where are the scissors? Where are the scissors? Oh, I, I tend to go and grab the ones that are with the uh, uh, with the knives. Uh, we got like a little wood thing with the knives and then there's scissors. And every time I grab them, <laughs> Polina could cooking. literally... Plina could literally be in another state and she calls me. She goes, I know you just picked up those scissors. <laughs> don't use those scissors. And I'm like, what's the point of having scissors if you can never use them? Because you don't use them for cooking and stuff. You use them to like break open boxes and cut my hair. What why does it matter? Because it's just ugh, keep it separate. We have so we have million... two, we have two pairs of scissors, no, one that more. I'm allowed to use and one that I'm not allowed to use. We have more use. than two pairs of scissors. You just don't know where they are. I don't and... need to know. I know where one of them is. Why would I need to know where all the scissors are? I know where one is. Okay. It's been a pleasure, guys. It's been a true pleasure. How many likes would we have to get for me to be able to shave my name into your head? Uh, literally, you do not have enough likes on Twitter. Or like Twitter doesn't have enough don't likes challenge, to get. Don't challenge the internet. No, no. Don't challenge no, the no, internet. No, Just good. throw a number out there. We're good. No. Just throw a number out there. 10,000? 10,000. 15? Like 800,000 million. That's not a number. It's all right. You're doing Bulgarian math. No problem. <laughs> all right, guys. That's it for today. Appreciate you watching Lunch Money. While Wall Street's trying to bang. while Wall Street's trying to get rich, the rest of us just trying to get our lunch money right. We will see you guys tomorrow. Hopefully, Polina still has the hair on her head. Bye.